Hey, welcome to the Cardboard Minute. I'm Will. I'm Farhan. Nabil. And we're going to have a little discussion on when is the board gaming hobby or aspects of it too much. Uh, and, you know, just I was kind of inspired by this because the, the Kickstarter that just closed for Marvel Zombicide. Okay. Run by Simon. And I think it is, is one of their, is their, the, their biggest ever, probably one of the biggest Kickstarters, period, ever. Mm -hmm. uh, it closed at just over $9 million US. Good Lord. With a little bit under 30,000 backers. Wow. Which, I mean, really, for, for that price, though, uh, the backers are actually paying a lot. They're paying, mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're kind of switching over to, I'll give you some, some Canadians. Most of my values I have are in American. Um, I know we're all Canadian here, so we're, we're, the numbers we're seeing are, are a lot higher. So I'll give you both. Uh, for basically all of the game content, right? I'm not just on the base game, which mm -hmm. was expensive too, but if you didn't want to miss out on... Like the all-in. on Yeah, uh, the all-in, um, if you didn't want to miss out on content, I see, which okay. I know like a lot of people feel like they need to get everything. Right. Uh, was $430 <laughs> US... That's about 545 Canadian with current exchange rate. Okay. Uh, and that's that's not if you got the giant Galacta statue, which mm -hmm. has its own scenario. But, I mean, unless you want a statue sitting this big in your house. <laughs> yeah, where do you put that? That, like, unless your wife is into Marvel and, yeah. and a big zombie Galactus. Yeah. Uh, I know mine would probably not appreciate if I brought home a statue that large. No. That's 615 no. US. Not to mention shipping. That's in shipping... If you got uh, everything, like the all-in all gameplay, right. that includes six different expansions yeah. with it, it comes to about, uh, sorry, without the expansion cost, they don't include the cost of shipping for expansions yet. Yeah. They only for the base game, the the main expansion, and the, the big guy is over $200 Canadian, uh, no, sorry, it's about two hundred dollars US in shipping. I think. Just I think I figured. Shipping. I think I figured like with, yeah, with some expansions or something. So I'm, maybe they'll give a deal on shipping for, for getting the all in pledge. Right. But still, two hundred dollars US for shipping okay. is is as much as half of the pledge already. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but do do you need it all? When 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 in your life are you going to play, all that? All that. And also, have you backed the game? Of, of similar size and have you played at all <laughs> right like I, I had backed Dark Souls back in the day right took forever to deliver um, and I, I didn't go all in but I did get a couple of big monsters mm -hmm. but like I also got all the extra things like the terrain tiles and and the different um, uh, like the one character expansion the, the character expansion the explorers the, 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 the wolf the, expansion and yeah, a bunch of guys the uh, phantoms yeah I spent a good few hundred dollars on, on that yeah. Yeah. and I probably saw nothing other than the base game the base and game. a couple monsters, yep. and I and I, I still played it, maybe you know several times, right. and then sold it because it was just it was too much, yeah, to get out. And I think the more I had, the less I wanted to play with it. Well, we'll talk about it later, but what's yeah. Wait, wait, you guys think we back to so, anything crazy like that? For, uh, I, I I don't know. We'll have someone to say on this one. Uh, <laughs> for me, for me, I'm 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 a. Not an anti Kickstarter guy by any stretch, but I am someone who shies away from Kickstarter, and I, I like to wait for retail unless um, I'm part of a group pledge, and I've, I've pledged a couple of games that are part of uh, group pledges to save on that shipping cost and get a get a little bit of price break. Um, the other, the only other time I would go in on a Kickstarter uh, for myself is when I know it's going to be a hard to find game at retail, it's going to be so an example for that is dwellings of elder mm -hmm. Um, and I was very happy to get part, you know, get that game cause it's still not available and it's a highly sought after game. Uh, I know it's going to hit retail eventually. Eventually. Um, it's been a pre-order for a long time. It's been, place, it's been pending for quite, quite a, mm -hmm. quite a bit, but it's, it's a hot, hot. So, so games like that, uh, and that, that itself was a, was a big, big box, but, uh, uh, again, it wasn't six boxes. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, I, I I agree with Will to to a great extent to, that you know if you get six or seven a, a game with that many that much content, how much of it are you actually going to see uh, during its lifespan? Um, unless it's a game you really really enjoy. So um, yeah, I'm I'm a little bit on the stay away from it kind of side. But Nabil, I know yeah, you got a different I'm, I'm 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 the opposite, uh, <laughs> but mainly because I have no willpower. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a sucker. I get sucked into the FOMO. Yeah, I, I am. I'm the first one to admit it. Yeah, 
Um, I've definitely backed some some games uh, and gone all in that realistically I'm probably never going to see the whole, all the content for. Yep. One of them that comes to mind is Mythic Battles Ragnarok. Right. Um, there's a ton of content. In there's uh, there's five boxes, two like massive ones that will take up an entire slot in the Kalex by themselves, mm. plus three or four more. Um, and uh, I, I have Mythic Battles Pantheon, which was the previous one. And I think I played it only three times. Mm -hmm. um, I have less of it, but uh, uh, I won't play it three times because it, it is it is a beast to set up. It's a big yeah. effort to it's, see. It's it's, it's it's not. It, it, there's a lot of little finicky rules, um, but I do love the game. And the one thing about Mythic Battle Ragnarok is they promise more solo scenarios. So that's kind of my justification. If you know, uh, so you can play it on your I'll own. I'll play yeah. it more if I can play it on my own. Because it, it's easier to get myself to buy into it than three or four other people. Right. Um, there's that one, and I mean, so you know, I and I think that one. It, would you say that it's it would hit the table less because there's more in it? Um, I uh, no, I don't think so. Um, not well, actually, who knows? It might. Um, there are some games that I look at my shelf and. I, you know, I, I've been meaning to get them to the table, and I look at how much stuff I have for them, and I'm just like, do I really want to set it all up? Where, where do I start? <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, like, so I can see that. Um, I, I think it's just, like, if, if, you, if you invest the money into it, you have to do it. You have, you have, to, you have to make it worth your... Make, worth put in the effort worth to... Your, yeah. worth, your, worth, worth, worth the money. Um, so, you know, um, but, you know, with, myth, with things like Mythic Battle, I, I know it's not going to come to retail. So yeah. if you don't back it on Kickstarter, or if you don't get it off of a used gonna, secondhand market, it's gonna be hard to find. Um, yeah. You're not gonna get it. No. Yeah. Um, and I do. I love the Mythic Battles. Um, that whole a series, system, and, series, you know, and the, the theme, the Viking theme, we love. Yeah. So, so much. So exactly. yeah, it's gonna be a, a great um, game when it comes in. But yeah, and like uh, X Men or uh, Marvel Unit X Men. Yeah. I went all in for that one. Yeah. Um, that one, there's like seven, eight boxes. That, you know and. Um, that one is way less complex. Yeah. Um, but, it's, but it's again, quick, but there's so much. If for there's it. so much, will it hit the table as often? Like on a yeah. lesser scale, I had a few couple Kickstarter growth with Star Realms content. Yeah. With all yeah. a bunch of mini packs and stuff, and I end up like as much as I loved it, I am selling it in, ex in kind of exchange for Shards of Infinity, just because it's it's it's, it's starting fresh and starting less. Yeah. You know, like. And, and already, Shards of Infinity has hit the table far more often than Star Realms did. Yeah. Not necessarily because it's you know a, a greater game or not, but it's just having to sort everything out and pick up like what am I going to use, yeah. and then the, shuffling the stack of cards yeah. is tall. The sorting and the choosing and the and the setup can be a, a beast for sure. Um, I, I think it comes down to the game. You know, do you like the game enough to um, overlook that initial hurdle? Of, of setup uh, to play it and um, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll chime in as well because uh, the setup is one thing but then if you get sometimes if you get that many expansions each expansion comes with a different set of rules that you have yep. to, to you have to learn and then yep. are you going to take the effort to learn those rules teach another player who maybe doesn't know the yep. base game either so you're going to teach the base game teach the expansion rules so you're like oh my, it's not worth the effort to, to go through all that just play the base game and then you're going to have five unplayed boxes and you're going to have one main box that's that's there yeah. in some cases I'm not saying that's the case every time yeah. but that's another hurdle I, I think yeah. it's it almost comes down to are you buying a game to add to your your you know your, ro your rotation of games I, I don't mean this like as a collector standpoint but if you play a variety of games like we do, are you adding, finding a new interesting game to add into the rotation, or are you committing to a lifestyle? Mm. Right? Because mm -hmm. at the point of something like Zombicide, if you want to experience all of that that has to offer, or uh, like Arkham Horror, yeah. if, you, if you want if you want to experience all that Arkham has Horror has to offer, it needs to be probably like the main game you play, or yeah. one of the only games you play. Yeah, and and the cost. It's kind of with that, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, Marvel Zombicide costs as much as, like, a PlayStation 5. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Are you going to play it as much as your PlayStation 5? Well, you know? Maybe. And if... Maybe. Even that's if just you're a, that type of player, yeah. That, I, of course, yeah. you're not a video gamer. You're a board gamer, you know? Though, so that that's that's a lifestyle choice. I'll, I'll chime in for one other thing. For games like that, the Simon 
kind of miniature style games, people like to paint them a lot. Um, and one yeah. of our friends has gotten big into painting yeah. now. Um, so that's another reason you might want the extra boxes because you just want to paint them all and, and you get that enjoyment out of, you know, sitting down and putting, you know, paintbrush down on a, on a, on a miniature. That's almost an entirely different hobby. That's an, yeah, exactly. Right. Like, and that's why you might want to do that. For sure. Yeah. yeah, Dark Souls kind of went that route. People wanted the minis just for painting. Yeah. <laughs> even if they were never really used. The minis weren't, some of them weren't that great quality. No, I had stuff. I had wings that never fit on yeah, uh, one of yeah, the dragons, yeah. you know, and the MB4, I just saw, made a decision to shave off yeah. the, the pegs so that they would actually fit was into the, the gaping, body. Was that the gaping dragon? The gaping dragon. <laughs> that one was notorious. It so I, from, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was either I trim it down so they would fit, yeah. or I just put it back in the box and <laughs> not deal with it yeah. and, and pretend it. I think I, think I played against it once with no wings. Just to, like, yeah, it, I mean, looked, like, it looks stupid on the table. Functionally, it works. It's yeah. there, but... It, it was, it was, yeah. Not nearly it would have been more cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. What do you think about uh, unnecessary extras and things like Kickstarters or, in the, or even in components in games, right? Like, you know, as, as terms of we're thinking of too much. Now, we talked a lot about Kickstarters. Well, well unnecessary extras. Uh, I'm going to point this little guy out. Or rather, not little. He's pretty big. Hmm. This was from... By the way, there's a light inside. Which is the, the cheapest, most awful little flashlight ever. Let me turn on here. And it just sits in like that. And it lights it up. This was a... Essentially, like a, it wasn't. I didn't think it was a stretch goal. Maybe it was just mandatory. Maybe it was a stretch goal, but it was part of the Suburbia Kickstarter pledge, and it's a first player marker. And that's all it is. And it came with, it came with two light, two, you know, it came with a replacement light, and a little cardboard punch out so that it wow. kind of fits in. It doesn't even hold it in properly. No, it doesn't hold it in. If I, if I wedge it in. Uh, it it'll, stay. it'll stay in a yeah. little bit better. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Now how do you turn it off? No, no, I have to extract now pliers or something. Oh, <laughs> but there's no way to get it out. Yeah, and my right. fingers are too big to extract Useful. it. So, like, it's, it's totally useless. It's it's the only thing of this type of of this like type of plastic in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means that they wouldn't just throw it into the molding with like, with other miniatures and things. Right. It's like it they made this made. specifically yeah. for for that. Right. Right. Yeah. What, I mean, and That's, it's I, so I keep, every time you I see it, I keep thinking to myself, how much money would they have saved by not making this? Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Can you, can you think of any uh, unnecessary? Yeah. Um, I, we, we just played a game recently called, called uh, what was it called? Terror Below. Yeah. And it's like a Tremors themed sort of oh, right, yeah. game. Um, I didn't personally enjoy the game very much. Um but it has these these cardboard uh, standees of the different like monsters that you're right. you're kind of fighting, but you, but they're all they do is they just stand around the board. Yep. You, you set them up around the board, and you don't use them for anything else. They're just for display purposes. They're not small um, either. They're not small. Yeah, they're yeah, big. Yeah. They're like you know like this big, you know, and so yeah. they're not small standees. Um, how many how many cardboards? Sheets did that? Did they come from? I don't even remember. remember? I don't even remember. But yeah, that's uh, that could have taken it, at least two cardboard sheets for for those six, like seven standees. Maybe I'm being harsh on the game, but it actually um, detracted my from my enjoyment of the game. Oh really? <laughs> it did. And if, it, if you it, had, it annoyed me. It's like, why are these here? Yeah. Like, if you had paid for the Kickstarter Deluxe version of Terror Below, they were actual mini miniatures. Probably, right? yeah. Which, aside from painting, are not used they're, they're in the game. Yeah. Them. Like, at least if you're going to do that, make them small minis so I can actually put them on the board when they spawn. Right. Or where they spawn, yeah. you know? That would at least, you could kind of justify, although there's still minis for minis' sake, you yeah, know? Yeah, that was kind of a, um, a waste of cardboard. But <laughs> I, I, it actually kind of annoyed me. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, the other game like that, Vindication, <clears throat> and um, it has, it comes with some great minis. Um, yeah. Completely useless. <laughs> yeah. They, well, with with one of the, the expansions in the game, you can put them on the board as a placeholder for that building, but you don't really use it. They don't move around the board, so why? <laughs> they, yeah, they don't. They don't really serve a kind of purpose. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there are. There's a certain draw of of display pieces. Like I get tear below. They were kind of annoying, but I could see like if we were playing at a at a, at a meetup where there's. It'll, yeah, like 20, oh, what's going on here? 20 tables of board yeah, games around. Yeah, it's got more presidents and people are like, people are gonna be like ooh, what's oh, that? What's yeah. that? But the other thing with that is that because they're, they're little thin cardboard standees, 
from my vantage point, I couldn't even see half of them. They were just a line segment. Mm. So, um, yeah. so, yeah, and they why? and they would block player view if you were yep. playing four players around the game. Yep. If you're looking from the other Some side, people are not seeing the game, or yeah. or they're going to get knocked off the table, or you're going to have to stand up every time you want to take a turn and see what's going on on the board. So that's mm. just yeah. So, that was a little... so where do you where do you draw the line then on components of things that are excess? Um, so for me, I think it's um, anything like that which looks cool but is a waste of you know air in the, in the in the box make the box smaller yeah. leave that stuff out or at least give a option um uh, in the case of kickstarters on on a deluxe pledge where you can go on all, all in on that stuff and you can just leave it out i give an example um i recently part of a group pledge uh, of a game uh called the witcher which uh scheduled to deliver end of 2022 early 2023 um well we'll, we'll see <laughs> tbd tbd um and it, it has a tier for uh, standees or minis um and so you can you can opt in for the all in which comes with i think 30 or 40 minis maybe even more uh or you can go standees cardboard coins etc um and minis are really nice in that game but again, I, I chose the standees pledge because I I don't want to spend that much money on mm -hmm. on minis. Um, I don't paint. They look cool, but the game will be uh, gameplay wise, it's exactly the same. So I chose to kind of go in on the lesser tier. So things like that, either give an option. So if it, if you're going to use it in the game, I'm okay with it. Uh, but if it's going to sit sit outside and just kind of take up space, I'm I'd, I'd say skip it. Yeah, like I I pledged on the. Uh, Oh, what's the, what's the, the one based on computer game where everything's frozen? I've already forgotten the name. Oh, uh, Frostpunk. Frostpunk, yeah. Mm -hmm. I've played in the Frostpunk, but at the non miniature level. Right. Because when I saw that the minis were coming in a separate box, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know, I don't want to have to go digging through the box to pull out Great point. the occasional mini. I mean, yeah. And they have, they have some additional minis like Train that are just gorgeous, but they're, they're unnecessary. And I feel like if I have to go fishing for them, and pull out multiple boxes. Yeah, the game is going to come out less, less. I think that's an excellent point. Now, yeah. it it did also. <laughs> uh, I will go back to Dwellings of Elder Vale, which is a fantastic game. Excellent game. But I specifically backed that one at the standee level, mm -hmm. thinking, you know, this is great. I'll get a, I'll get possibly, you know, a smaller box. Smaller box, but it was. So then I can bring it out to but... to meetups and stuff. Nope. <laughs> but then when I received it, yeah, it's the same size box as everyone else, yeah. and there are. Empty, empty cardboard spacers, yeah. right? Taking up that space, taking up <laughs> two thirds of the entire box, yeah. and it, it is a it is a large box, a yeah. Box. yeah. And and I mean, at least it fits in, in on my shelf at an angle, so mm -hmm. it's not taking up much more space right. than a single game, right? But you know, I uh, if I had known if it was one giant box, yeah, maybe I would have I would have I would have just spent the extra money on the minis because yeah, that's minis, minis, yeah. it's not that I didn't want to spend the extra money it's that I wanted a game that a was smaller more a compact. little more compact a little more accessible <laughs> yeah. yeah a little easier to get to the table yeah 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 that's a uh, just to kind of uh, echo off your point the uh, the difficulty of kind of fishing through the box and kind of putting the minis back in the, into their, their their cutouts and kind of trying to find where the right mini goes and and set up and tear down extends rather than kind of throwing standees and you don't really care about you know, putting standees in a baggie or something, right? So you can just kind of, it, it makes that that much easier. Mm -hmm. um, we just played a game uh, recently, Destinies, and mm -hmm. that was um, kind of annoying. The, the the minis, again, were kind of very, very tiny. And they're when you're that, that small, you kind of can't tell unless you really they, dig more closely. They were closely. surprisingly good for that small. They, they were good. They were good. They small they were, but, but they were figuring out which one goes out. into which spot afterwards when you're done playing. Yeah. That's a bit of a bit of a hassle. And then trying to find them, um, which one's the right one? Yeah, is, so. which if you play an expansion, is it in the base base game box? Is it in the expansion box? Kind of putting it back. And they, um, they really weren't necessary. Yeah, they weren't like, necessary. Yeah. They well, were they were they were nice to have with with like destinies. Like what? Like a half of that game isn't necessary. Half yeah, of the <laughs> no, that's game true. Necessary. Like, like you don't need you don't need any of the, any of the map tiles. You need a phone or a tablet and a deck of cards and the, do and the cards and the, and the dice and you know and that's pretty much all you need. The maps and the minis were completely. Um, like, Extra, mm -hmm. but uh... yeah, it was just there's just a little bit too much. Um, so I, I do think if you're gonna deluxify components, um, I think the the companies that instead of just shoehorning in random extras or or big minis for no reason, yeah. the ones that upgrade the usable components, mm -hmm. 
So the, the things that you're going to be handling the most, yes, right? Maybe like maybe it's thicker tiles, uh, you know, cardboard. Um, in the case of the, as you can't see it in the camera, but uh, the Anachrony Infinity Box, they added all like acrylic tokens for a lot of the the things that you're handling a yes. lot, mm -hmm. and so you could just throw out all the cardboard chits and add in either acrylic things or or metal tokens yeah. or some some metal things. And it, I think the the tactile feel, especially for a game that you love, and yeah. is going to hit the table relatively yeah, often, it, yeah. or even as just a nice collector piece. You know, I think uh, you know the extra funds are better spent going into something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I know people love metal coins. Um, I, I do like metal coins. So, metal coins. Uh, I, I like the feeling, the sound, and uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't think I own many, but metal coins. But I, I get that the, the yeah. tactile feel. It is, can it, enhances the gameplay. It, yeah, it can it, it can definitely enhance my enjoyment of the game or how immersed I am in in, in the game. In that world, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. I like. Um, I, I'm a big fan of uh, card sleeves with uh, like art on the back. Mm -hmm. Specific yeah. to the game, especially if it's a game with a lot of cards that you're gonna be shuffling a lot. Yeah. Um, if you get, if you play the game a lot, those cards are gonna wear out really quickly. Um, so having you know some card sleeves. Um, I mean, you can go out and buy penny sleeves mm -hmm. for, for, yeah. for cheap. They don't need to have. But, back, but include, I, like, I like the art on the back. Include extra sleeves, though. Yeah. Because sleeves do get damaged over yeah, time. Sure. They right. will for split sure. over time. Yeah. And, you know, if they throw a handful of extras in there, you're not going to have to be unsleeving them right. all just because two of them split. Two yeah. Of them. <laughs> yeah. And you can't get extras because they're custom art in the back. Yeah. Um, for me, the, uh, the, uh, the best pieces are those, especially in bag building games or kind of bag games where you're drawing stuff out of the bag, a um, couple of those, uh, Orleans is, is one, um, the, the deluxe edition comes with wooden, uh, character tiles that you're drawing from bag, which is really neat. Um, uh, the other game, Bullet Heart, uh, comes with uh, those. Are they plastic or wooden? They're the the, the premium version is, is wooden. The, the Kickstarter was the Kickstarter is, is wooden pieces. So when you're drawing stuff out of the bag and it's getting all mushed up in there, cardboard tiles will get worn out over over time. Um, Cascadia uh, is a good example of a game that comes with wooden tokens. It comes with wooden yeah. tokens without breaking the bank either. Yeah, like they're small. Yeah. They came with a retail too, right? Yeah, yeah which is amazing. Yeah, I got a retail. I think the only thing that I'm missing is a couple of the promo couple of the promos, but, yeah. cards. Um, but it's got the wooden. Um, I, I, I I think it has some. Does it have upgraded pinecone tokens or no? No, no. no? no. So yeah, it's just the promo cards. The and promo I've got, cards, I've got which the wooden tokens. But they they included a lot of yeah. wooden tokens that they didn't have to be incredibly thick. No. But I think the the extra uh, enhancement to the gameplay is yeah. quite nice. Yeah. And I understand yeah. that publishers need to hit a certain price point. Right. Right. If in order for their game to be appealing, and there's sort of emphasis on lighter games needing to be cheaper because mm -hmm. people don't feel like there's a value uh you know which i, I don't agree with um but there i think that there's definitely an emphasis on more gameplay equals more value uh when people are looking at buying games mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's tough like I, I want lots of games but i also want them nice yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, yeah we're, it's it's tough to choose where's the line, I, mean, the, the line I don't know i guess um for me it's is it going to fit in the base game box? Um, am I going to need an extra box on my shelf? That, because mm, space is a premium, as I always is, say. Yeah, we'll yeah. get to this. Um, and is it, is it going to enhance my enjoyment of the game? Um, you know? Um, but also, if, if the enhanced components cost as much as the game itself, then that I also draw the line there. Like yeah. that's that's too do much. An like do an Imperium. I'd rather yeah, buy it. I'll buy another, buy another game. Buy another game, and yeah, that those components aren't fitting in the base box, right? Nope. So that's another box you have to lug around if you're taking it's, it yeah, to someone's exactly. house. Yeah, so. exactly. Just for the components themselves. That's true. Yeah, uh, I do it. think FOMO is or the fear of missing out. Yeah, yeah, uh, it can be dangerously strong, especially I think. This hobby is bad. I mean, going back to Zombie Kickstarter. Or the zombie, zombie, kickstarter. Sorry, zombie, kickstarter. zombie kickstarter zombie kickstarter, <laughs> the, kickstarter yeah. the, died, marvel, the marvel zombie side or just simon games in general i think yeah the, the fear Probably that it is the same you'll never range. be able to get these from retail yeah unless you back them at far more expensive than you probably would find them at retail yeah, yeah. uh especially you but and i feel like some companies manipulate that and uh, simon or C come on i don't know if they yeah. keep come on, changing yeah. it or not I think are the masters at manipulating people's come on with uh, manipulates people's FOMO, <laughs> which 
I mean, I know is a, is a business model that is probably working for them, yeah. but I also at the same time feel like like they there are certain games like like uh, Ank or Ankh where there is the monsters were specifically designed to shoehorn in additional yeah they don't play much of a role expansions in the actual gameplay right I haven't played the game so I'm not sure but I've heard that they don't really play a, a no big of a role they, as you expect. only a couple of them are are in any one given game yeah and okay. they don't change that much but there was so many expansions and extras and stretch goals and stuff yeah for these monsters yeah you know I feel like you know and, and same thing for for Zombicide yeah. you know. The other thing is when you have access to an IP like Barbel that you know has a massive, massive diehard fan base, um, I think from a business perspective, you can justify spending all that extra upfront money to produce all these massive mains because, frankly, people are going to buy it. Oh, because yeah. Because it's but Marvel. And, and at $600, hmm. you know, uh, for an all-in pledge, like yeah. U.S., they're they're not spending extra. They're making it back. They're making it back because you, exactly, you, you know you're gonna make that money back. It's, it's already yeah, yeah, tenfold, significantly tenfold. more expensive than any of the previous Zombicide book games. Yep. Uh, I don't remember the exact stats, but the um, I saw a video from the the King of Average uh, is, is okay. a YouTuber who was yep. talking about mm. base pledge from Marvel Zombies versus base pledge from some of the um, the previous Zombicide games, right. and there's like at least a good thirty four percent increase. Mm. Wow. from like the previous one not even the first one and, and he was attributing that not to the fact that there's a license because yes they have to pay for license mm -hmm. but you also know that you're going to sell yep. significantly more mm -hmm. and be able to get reduced costs in production mm -hmm. um you know and, and be able to make it back that way so yeah. i don't know if something's changed or not but they're they're certainly well I, I am very proud to say i did not Succumb to the FOMO from our <laughs> yeah. I, I I held out. Well, the, the pledge manager will be open for probably a year. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie though. I did. I, I did. I considered backing just like the base game plus the X Men box expansion, mm -hmm. but a lot uh, good. But I I, I didn't because yeah. I don't I don't know. I think it, I think it that I think that is, even That'll that be, is too much money. And the shipping is too yeah. much, and it's I don't okay. need another big so, box. So to 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 remind you of why not to back it. Um, although I mean, if you are backing it. Enjoy it. Absolutely. I'm sure it's gonna be a great game. If you're if 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 your wife's gonna leave you because you backed it, then don't back it. <laughs> yeah. But, or you don't have a wife and you can enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if if you're gonna enjoy it and play it, by all means do it. Yeah. Um what expansions do you guys own, if any, that you have never played? Mm -hmm. Oh. Right? Because like, again, release. this is part of the part of the FOMO is is also the need to have everything. Right. Yeah. Right? And I'm, you know, I'm going to pull out Gloomhaven Forgotten Circles. Mm. Right? Still in shrink. Still in shrink. <laughs> yeah. And I, mean, and I play my games. I, uh, I don't mm. think I have a single game that is unlearned or unplayed on my shelf because as I play them, I play solo, I play with you guys, I play with my family. Yep. Um, you know, I, I, I read and learn rules and I make videos. So, uh, but this one is still in here because it's played at the end of the campaign. Oh. You, you uh, I mean, I guess you could probably open it up, but it's, it's, the story in here is designed to be played after. So you don't and, want to spoil anything by looking through it. And this. Gloomhaven is already a good, like, 100 scenarios before oh, yeah. you get to this point. Wow. And I bought this at just about the same time I bought Gloomhaven. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, again, feeling the need to have everything. You need to. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get to this. Right. Well, I should probably sell it, but I keep wanting to. The hang thing on is, to it. like, by the time you, I mean, you you are enjoying Gloomhaven a lot. I am enjoying and you're playing it a lot, solo, yeah. right? So by the time you and, and I'm playing Jaws of the Lion with my son, yeah, too. exactly. So you like the you like the system, you like the game. So by the time you get to the end of the of, of Gloomhaven, the question is: Is this going to be readily available? I mean, Frosthaven, the sequel, is coming out next year. Yeah. Or this year. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, I still want to play this when Frosthaven is sitting yeah. beside Gloomhaven. True. Gloom true. Um, <laughs> well, you want to play it 110 times. Well, I want to play it yeah. 110 times. <laughs> yeah. And then Frosthaven 100 times. I don't, I don't think I've played anything 100 times. Yeah. No, I definitely haven't. I'm not at 100. Um, so, so, yeah, I, I've definitely got some games, that, uh, some expansions that I have that are untouched on my shelf. Um, I, like Will, I don't have any games on my shelf that have not been played. I... Played all of them. I've learned all of them. I don't remember all of them, <laughs> but I might except might come back to me if I played again. Right. Um, but, but yeah, I I bought. Um, I didn't back this one on Kickstarter, but I I bought a whole bunch of retail stuff for uh, Sword and Sorcery. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, 
uh, it's like a dungeon crawl sort of high fantasy um, game. Uh, I don't, I think it's like the only dungeon crawl that I actually own. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, but I own almost everything for it. Uh, I've got I've, I've played through the base box once, and I've played through two of the exp- or all of one of the expansion boxes and part of the second one. I have a third expansion box that I haven't touched. Mm-hmm. And then I also just bought the Sword and Sorcery Ancient Chronicles box, which is a whole new campaign that takes place before the original one. I I haven't even, I haven't even punched it yet. Right. Um, so I guess that game, I guess that could be technically a game that I have not played on my shelf, but it's the same system. So I'm counting it as I haven't played it. Um, so, but, um, but yeah, definitely, I, I look at it every day and I'm like, I should really get it to the table. And then I don't. Yeah, no, and, 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 yeah. And, the, and I, I already know, I know how to play it. I've played it enough that I remember how to play it for the most part. Um, so it's not even that I have to relearn the game. It's not yeah. even that hump to get over. It's just, as you as you say, there's just so much for it. There's, and there's and a lot it, for it, it set, set up is a beast for that game, too. Yeah. Yeah, I have a couple, uh, one or two. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as you guys know, big into Arkham, um, big into Lord of the Rings, Marvel Champions. So I've got a bunch of stuff for that game that I've yet to dive into. So those, I guess, count as expansions, even though they're they're card boxes, they're character packs, there are scenarios, um, and they come with their own level of FOMO because it is hard to get them. It's hard to get yeah. them. Uh, they're 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 starting to print them more and more now, but during the pandemic, they were almost impossible to find, uh, so especially for Arkham and Lord of the Rings. So I picked up a bunch of those. I'm happy to have them, um, and I know I'll get to them at some point. But uh, uh, especially because I play those games solo, so I don't really need to play with yeah. uh, with a group for that. Um, even though I'm happy to play with a group, um, but so I have a bunch of those that are that are still not played, and, and yeah, they will get get played at some point. I don't know when, um, so I'm still waiting on those. Uh, I picked up a couple of expansions for. Uh, some of the smaller games that I that I have, King Domino um, and uh, Imhotep, haven't played those because the base games are great on their own. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and we and we did do a video on expansions um, yeah. already. In case mm-hmm. anybody wants to, to yeah. watch our yeah. recommendations and expansions and why not to buy expansions. Yeah, yeah. it's um, a good video. Go watch it. Go check it out. <laughs> um, so I picked those up. They fit in the base box. They add a um, l- little bit of variability, but again. I, those games that are, are games that I play with newer players, um, so I'd rather just. Do you want to add the expansion in right away to add, bump player? it up? Yeah. So yeah. those games I bought when I was kind of stuck getting into the hobby, I was like, "Oh, these games are great. I want more stuff for it." That's and the like, other thing, you know. A lot of the things that I that I went all in on, I went all in when I was fairly new into the yeah. hobby, and even a lot of my Kickstarter, uh, like I, I kickstarted last year, and last year was, or maybe the year before, was when I started to sort of really get serious right. into and. and Started buying more games, um, so would I have backed them and gone taste, all in? Taste of uh, now, if, a little bit. If uh, if they came out today, um, I don't know. Maybe maybe not. Yeah, I mean you've you've learned more about yourself over yeah you know the the time playing games right, and, yeah. and about what you like and why. And I mean I think everyone's gonna be different. So. Like if those expansions, uh, like if, or, or like the uh, Marvel Zombs, <laughs> the, Mar- the zombie Marvel yeah. zombie Kickstarter, <laughs> so these, all the zombie Kickstarter, I mean, you know yeah. that appeals to you, and you're gonna play it. Ultimately, like if you've got the budget for it and you want to do it, how about it? Do it. I but, mean, we we live in North America too, right? We're we are like in the land of of excess. Oh yes, yeah, for sure. Spending you know? on f- frivolous things. Yeah. I mean, the fact that we're talking about this alone, <laughs> can you know? Yeah, we have means we have the luxury of you know going out and buying these things if we so choose yeah um so we have that we have that luxury for sure but uh if, if you've got the budget and you want to do it you know uh do it yeah, uh, yeah and in fact i would even say uh you know support game designers yeah right absolutely. like if, if there's a game designer you love and you love the game that could be another reason to get more content for it yep. yeah i mean not not solely for that reason you know i think that you know, you're not just necessarily throwing money at them, mm-hmm. right? And you're never going to play their their things, but you just see what else they've done. See what else, yeah, yeah. Cars them publish more games, you know, design more games. Yeah, by the same token, though, if you don't have the budget for it, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't break budget, the bank. <laughs> don't don't do it. Right. That's yeah, that's a big thing. It's, it's not worth going broke over. It's not yeah. worth uh, you know a your wife other, walking out on you, getting <laughs> getting uh, upset. Another massive box comes to the door. <laughs> Yeah, 
it's, it's been threatened a couple times. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be me this year. I swear to God. <laughs> no, it's a, a Shan's very supportive. She yeah. she wouldn't walk out, but yeah. I'd probably die and be buried in the backyard somewhere <laughs> if uh, if yeah. I back you know Marvel zombies or zombie Kickstarter or something. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so thanks guys for this discussion. Thanks for watching. You know, make your own decisions when it comes to expansions. If you want to hear more of our views about FOMO or or just expansions in particular check out our video about that and our recommendations on which expansions are worth your time and you you know sh you should at least consider heavily um, mm -hmm. if you own the base games and uh, yeah that's it thanks for watching see you next time have a good one